Halfway down the trail to hell, in a shady meadow green, are the souls of all dead troopers camped near a good old time canteen. And this eternal resting place is known as Fiddler's Green. Marching past, straight through to hell, the infantry are seen, accompanied by the engineers, artillery, and marines. For none but the shades of cavalrymen dismount at Fiddler's Green. Though some go curving down the trail to seek a warmer scene, no trooper ever gets to hell ere he's emptied his canteen, and so rides back to drink again with friends at Fiddler's Green. And so when man and horse go down beneath a saber keen, or in a roaring charge of fierce melee, you stop a bullet clean, and the hostiles come to get your scalp, just empty your canteen and put your pistol to your head and go to Fiddler's Green. Bring it in. I need you to bring it in. 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 Post number six for providing the military rights. And all the family members that have showed up. When we first started this, we only knew of one. And now I think I counted 14 or 15 that uh, are here today. So um, we appreciate it. We are here to honor a Buffalo soldier who has had never a military headstone or any other marker for the last 71 years since his death. Who died April 2, 1945. <coughs> According to oral history, he was born either in 1856 or 1860 into a slave family in Barnwell, South Carolina. After watching his mother, Amanda, being sold on the auction block, he befriended a white man whose name was Jack, later became known as Jack's son, <laughs> therefore Jackson. According to a daughter, his real name was either Sims or Simpson. He worked as a common laborer until August 24, 1881, when he enlisted for five years in the United States Army as an infantryman. By October 18, 1881, he was with Company M of the 9th Regiment of the U.S. Cavalry, serving at Fort Cummings, New Mexico. In December 1981, he was en route to Fort Riley, Kansas, he was stationed there until June 26, 1882. From Fort Riley, he was sent to the fields in Colorado until October 5, 1882. He was back at Fort Riley from October 5 to June 1, 1883. From that time, he was en route and at Fort Lewis, Colorado until June 19, 1883. Then again in the field until July 10, 1883, and back to Fort Lewis on August 11, 1883. They were sent in the field in New Mexico until September 5th, then back to Fort Lewis. Fort Lewis was then located no, uh, outside of Durango, Colorado at that time. From October 5th, 1883, they were en route and at Fort Riley, Kansas until January 4, 1885. They were sent back into the field again until May 19, 1885, then back to Fort Riley, Kansas, until June 13, 1885. From there, they were en route and at Fort Washakie, Wyoming, which is north of Fort Lorne, or excuse me, the town of Lorne, Wyoming, until August 23, 1886, where he was discharged from. According to a report of his physical examination after discharge, he worked as a common laborer in Omaha, Nebraska. Until 1891, he went to O'Neill, Nebraska and carried hod until Christmas time. He then worked to, on a farm uh, for nine years, went into farming for himself for seven years in the Holt Antelope counties in the Bartlett area. In 1893, he married Ida Fears at Orchard, Nebraska, and from this union there were 13 children born. In the 1920 census, they were living on 11th Street in the central city. He worked as a street swamper or a teamster. In 1932, 
Dr. E. E. Boyd applied and received a military pension of $30 for Benjamin. At this time, he was listed as a teamster. His health was starting to fail him about this time. Ida died in 1933 from cerebral hemorrhage. After Ida's death, Benjamin may have lived with his son Joe in Grand Island. City directories show that he resided at the same address for some time. In 1945, military records show Mr. Jackson entered the Soldiers and Sailors Home in Grand Island and died at the Veterans Administration Hospital in Lincoln on April 2, 1945, of a stroke and heart complications. The funeral was held at the Gettys Funeral Home, burial here in the Holden section of the cemetery in Central City. I'd like to turn it over now to Nancy, who will give us a little history about the Buffalo Soldiers. Although several African-American regiments were raised during the Civil War as part of the Union Army, the Buffalo Soldiers were established by Congress as it reorganized the U.S. Army and authorized the first peacetime all-black regiments with the formation of two regiments. They were designated the 9th and the 10th U.S. Cavalry, and that was in 1866. 150 years ago this year. Why the time-honored name of Buffalo Soldier? Sources point to a combination of legends. Native American Indians called them Buffalo Soldiers because they had curly hair, like bison, and the nickname was given out of respect for their fierce fighting ability. <coughs> African Americans accepted the badge of honor and wore it proudly. The term Buffalo Soldiers became a generic term for all black soldiers. It is now used for U.S. Army units that trace their direct lineage back to the 9th and 10th Cavalry units whose service earned them an honored place in U.S. history. From 1866 to the early 1890s, once the westward movement had begun, prominent among those blazing, treacherous trails to the Wild West were the Buffalo Soldiers of the U.S. Army. These African Americans were charged with and responsible for escorting settlers, cattle herds, and railroad crews, and escorting the U.S. mail. The 9th and 10th Cavalry Regiments also conducted military campaigns designated as the Indian Wars on a western frontier that extended from Montana in the northwest to Texas, New Mexico, Arizona in the southwest, and across the Great Plains, including Nebraska. Much has changed since the days of the early Buffalo Soldiers, including the integration of all military servicemen and women. However, the story of the Buffalo Soldiers remains one of unsurpassed courage and patriotism and will be forever a significant part of the history of America. Okay, starting perhaps as early as the 1880s when uh, Trooper Jackson was in the service, the tune Fiddler's Green uh, has come to be a part of the cavalry. Uh, it started out as the ocean-going sailors in Irish, Ireland, but uh, has become adopted and still is used today uh, by those units. The following reading, called The Last Campaign, was sent to us by a Buffalo Soldier reenactor group from uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado. And they thought this would be uh, an appropriate reading for today. The Last Campaign. As a Buffalo Soldier dies, he mounts his horse and begins the long journey to his final resting place. He travels along a dusty road with many other travelers trying to reach their final destinations. 
After many days on the road, the weary soldier reaches a big, beautiful valley. The weary, yearning soldier peers into the valley and sees luscious green grass, many beautiful bubbling streams teeming with fish, and abundant trees filled with branches laden with fruit bowing to the ground. As a weary, wounded soldier enters the valley, he sees the old broken stirrup on the ground, then a rusted out canteen, and finally an old torn saddlebag lying on its side. He glances off to his right and notices a row of tents with smiling soldiers sitting around a warm, friendly series of campfires. A sergeant is beckoning for him to join them at the tents. The buffalo soldier rides over to the sergeant and asks, What place is this? The sergeant replies, This, my friend, is Fiddler Green, where the water is pure, the grass is eternal green, your belly is always full and your hunger satisfied, while your brothers welcome you to eternity with love and a smile. Step down from your horse, <coughs> Trooper Benjamin Jackson. This is your final resting place, and we welcome you with the Creator's grace and love. May you forever dwell with peace with your brothers at arms. Enter now into the eternal joy of brotherhood and peace of our great Creator. We pray that our brother who lies here in peace, may he forever lie in the comforting arms of our Creator. We dedicate this tombstone as a remembrance of his great gift to his country and his everlasting peace in the joy of the Lord. Amen. Order, home. Dismiss.